Hi, my sister-in-law is visiting from Australia and <laughs> I'm kidding, she's cool. <laughs> she brought her a special hair dryer from there that's apparently the only type in existence in the entire universe that does the magic on her hair. The problem is that it runs on 240 volts and here we have 120 volts. Yeah, she's Australian while my wife is Canadian. It's because we are all Iranian, of course, but every one of us moved to a different spot in the world. The end. Maybe I should do a draw my life or something in my other channel meditation. Anyway, my sister-in-law ended up in Australia and now she needs like 230 volts to run her hair dryer. What she needs is a power adapter. And so she bought this. Yes, this is an adapter, but it only converts the Australian plug shape into North American plug shape. And in fact, this thing was purchased from China, so it already had an Australian adapter on top of it. You could directly connect the- It doesn't matter! All we need is something to convert 120 volt AC to 240 volts. Of course, I'm not blaming her for not knowing. She's a senior planner and project manager with a background in chemical engineering. I am the electrical engineer, so all I'm asking is to trust me for once! I earn my skills from experience. If you also like to learn a new skill or improve it, then click on the link in the description and go to Skillshare where you can get two months of free service in which you can take many of the thousands of classes available. More on that later. But seriously, the best gift you can give yourself or anybody is knowledge. So yes, of course, we can plug this into the 120 volt AC line and it will turn on. But at half the voltage, we only get a quarter of the power out of it. So it won't heat or blow enough. Of course, there are tons of electronics out there that come with their own switching power supplies, like a laptop or a mobile phone charger that support the entire input voltage range. For these, all you need to do is to adapt their plug. But things like an iron or a hair dryer don't have their power adapter. So this is a transformer that outputs 240 volts. You simply plug this into the 120 volt and plug your hair dryer in and turn this on. Oh sh**. Ow f ah. <laughs> This could only output 100 watts. But this needed 1000 watts. There are 1000 watts 240 volts step up transformers you could buy, but for that price, you could buy a whole new hair dryer. You can borrow our hair dryer, you know, I don't need it. It's the only one that does it for you, eh? You know, you just look fine the way you are. I'm sure we can find something similar. No, I didn't buy my degrees, I know how to make it work. Fine! Duh. Hey, actually we do have 200 volt or 240 volt AC at home. In North America, we run most things at 120 volt AC, but we also do realize that for very high power stuff like the laundry dryer or the electric stove, running them on 120 volt AC would draw tons of current. So those things run between 220 volt phases at my home 120 degrees apart to make around 205 volts AC. So for the same power, it means half the current. I heard at some homes they invert one phase 180 degrees to make an actual 240 volt AC. Is that true? Question mark? I'm in a house now that's being renovated. Let's check the voltage here. This is the oven outlet. The voltage reading here will show us if the phases are 120 degrees out or 180 degrees out. Let's check. Holy Piece of the meter was on current. Always make sure it is on voltage before you measure voltage. Oh, hopefully it can still measure voltage. Oh, there you go. We have 240 volt AC, which means our 120 volt AC lines are 180 degrees out of phase. So it is true. They wire the houses differently than the apartments. Whoa. What's going on here? I hear some electric hissing and arcs. What the hell is going on here? It seems like they've cut a piece of wire here and the water dripping from that pipe got into that hole and the wire is shorting. This might set the house on fire. We have to do something about it. So yeah, from the kitchen, 
water is dripping. I open this so the water gets out and the wire should be down here. I'll try to pull it out before it burns anything. Here, I found a wire and pulled it out of the ceiling. Uh, I think I need to do something about it. I wish I know which fuse was connected to this guy. Oh, I guess when the universe doesn't want the house to burn down, it sends me over so that I discover the short. <laughs> well, I don't have my tools with me to disconnect the wire, so for now I'll just disconnect the main fuse. Jeez, and now how do I find my way out? Yeah, there we go. The contractors can come and fix it. I was lucky to be there and to catch it. Imagine if I just filmed there and didn't catch the issue. Who would ever believe that it wasn't my fault the house burned down? Anyway, I should be able to tap into our oven somehow if I pull it back a little bit. Thanks to the stupid design of the outlet, I can pull it back a little bit and expose the high voltage lines. Let's see what voltage we... <laughs> Ow! What the f*** was the... Stepped on stupid spaghetti down here. I have to clean it up. Let's do it. <laughs> Stupid sketchy tight space. Anyway, these two are the two phases that are 206 volt different and this one is neutral that's 120 volts different. So it means that our two phases are 120 degrees apart. But this is too tight and dangerous here. So maybe the perfect location for her. I'm joking, of course. I'll break my back trying to pull her body out of there. And why do we need to go back there anyway when we can pull one of these heating elements out? See if I probe it and turn this on. I read the 205 volt AC here and these elements can run over 1000 watts so this output is pretty adequate for me. It's a shame I can't plug this directly in there. Well, this is super sketchy, but well, let's see if it works. Woo. Okay, it works. I guess I can wire an outlet here and plug it directly in there to be safer. Oh hey, here's an idea. I remember, for some reason, all the outlets in my kitchen have a separate phase going to every outlet. See? There. I think it's because we are running high power appliances in the kitchen and it's wiser to run them from different phases, not to overload the line. So if I can plug the hair dryer between two phases, I'll be in business. I just need some plugs and outlets. Here we are. Every wire of the outlet is connected to the live of one of these plugs. And even if we just plug in one of them, it is still safe to touch the other one because it's not connected anywhere. Now if we connect the hair dryer... I was wrong. If you plug in a hair dryer that's on, the live voltage will travel through the hair dryer to the other plug. So this is live now. It's only safe if you plug both of them in first and then plug the hair dryer. <laughs> See? It works like a charm. I did it again, guys. You just bought a new one, eh? I thought this was the only... This one works even better. I did find you the perfect solution. At least I feel a little bit better knowing that this video is sponsored by Skillshare, a community of people with all sorts of knowledge and skills from business, woodworking, technology, art, music and more who are willing to share it there. Don't forget to use my link in the description to get two free premium months, after which it's only $10 a month on an annual subscription. You'll learn your brains out.
I love the fact that the Skillshare platform provides incentive to people with knowledge to come out of hiding and share what they know and to make that knowledge so easily available to everyone in the world. Two months free! I really enjoyed the introduction to Arduino by Mark Fronfelder. Everybody has been using Arduinos to control stuff and I feel like I've been slacking behind. So maybe I should take some more advanced classes there and then maybe we can build something together, eh? Question mark? Check them out.